Hello and welcome to all of my students. In this new video, we are going to prove the non-existence of the limit of sine 1 over x when x approaches 0. We all know, let's write this limit over here otherwise. We all know that the limit of sine 1 over x when x approaches 0 equals the limit of sine t when t equals infinity. And we all know that this limit here does not exist. This limit is a DNA. And the reason behind the non-existence of this limit, we can draw the curve of sine t over here. And this is t and this is y. We all know that the function sine t oscillates between 1 and minus 1. So we can draw it approximately, it will look almost like this. And it keeps going forth like this. When t approaches plus infinity, for example, we cannot predict the behavior of this curve. This function sine t when t approaches plus infinity can be one, can be minus one, or can take a value between the two. And we know the condition for the existence of a limit of f, we say that f of x has a limit equals l when x approaches a, it means this equivalent that the, the limit l is unique. This is the only condition for the existence of the limit. However, here, when we take the function sine t, when t approaches plus infinity or minus infinity, we cannot predict which limit it's going to be. There is no unique limit that sine t converges to. This is the reason behind the non-existence of this limit over here. Now, this ge geometrically, now we are going to prove the non-existence of this limit doing some proofs, some mathematical proofs. So, in order to prove that the limit of sine 1 over x when x approaches 0 is a d and e, which means does not exist, we are going to need the Cauchy criterion, which, uh, which says this proposition over here is equivalent to when I give you an epsilon which is greater than 0 for all delta which is greater than 0 also, there exists x1 and x2 that when we take the absolute value of x1 minus 0, we will find it less than delta. And when we take the absolute value of x2 minus 0, we'll find it less than delta. And also, when we take the absolute value of sine 1 over x2 minus sine 1 over x1, we will find it greater than or equal to epsilon. This is the Cauchy criterion. So if we want to choose that this limit over here does not exist, we must first find an epsilon, which is greater than zero. Then we have to find x1 and x2. That's when we plug x1 here and x2 here, we will find the both of absolute values less than delta. And also when we plug x2 here and x1 here, this term over here, we will be greater than epsilon that we first chose it in this step. So the steps are very simple. First of all, we must choose an epsilon, an epsilon. Make it, this is an advice, make it smaller. And the second step, we must choose x1 and x2 that in two conditions that satisfy the two conditions. Conditions. Condition number one is x1 minus zero must be less than delta and x2 minus zero must be less than delta. Condition number two, 
when we take the absolute value of sine one over x2 minus sine of one over x1, this term over here must be greater than or equal than epsilon that we first chose in the first step. So make epsilon, first of all, we have to choose an epsilon because the definition says there exists an epsilon, at least one epsilon, but for all, or there exists for all delta greater than zero, there exist x1 and x2, but when we plug x1 here, and x2 here, the both terms will be less strictly than delta. And also when you plug x2 here and x1 here, this term over here will be greater than the same epsilon we chose in the first step. Therefore, for example, if we chose delta equal to one or epsilon equal to one, which values of x1 and x2 that when we plug it over here will be, for example, two equal to two? Which value of x2 and x1, when we plug it in this term, the result is going to be 2 because 2 is greater than 1 and the problem is solved. So, first of all, we have to find the value of x1, x2, but make this proposition over here or this term over here greater or equal to epsilon. If we chose epsilon equals 1, make this proposition over here equal to 2. How to make now, how to make sine of 1 over x2 minus sine of 1 over x1 greater than 1 or equal to 2? If we make this term over here equal to 1 and make this term over here equal to negative 1, we will have 1 minus negative 1 equal to 2, which is greater than 1, which is epsilon. So we have to make this value over here equal to one, and this value over here equal to minus one. So, let me write this again. We have sine of one over x two, pardon, x two minus sine of one over x one must be greater than epsilon, which is one. We chose epsilon to be one. We can chose any epsilon we want any epsilon. Now, how to make this equal to one and make this equal to negative one? So we will have one minus negative one equal to two, which is greater than epsilon and the limit ends up to be a D and E. This is our proof. First of all, we have to choose an epsilon. Second of all, we have to choose X1 and X2 that satisfy the two conditions. The first conditions, we have to plug X1 minus zero and find it less than delta and x2 minus zero and find it less than delta and this condition over here. So how can we make sine one over x2 equal to one? If sine of one over two, one over x2 equal to one, this means that one over x2 equals pi over two plus two and pi. So if one over x2 equals pi over two plus two and pi, this will make sine of one over x2 equals one, always. So x1 equals, when we take the inverse of this and this, we will find one over pi over two plus two and pi. This is the first value of x2. Now we must make this value over here equals to minus one. We take sine one over x1 equals minus one. What does this imply? This implies that one over x1 is equal to three pi over two plus two n pi. And this equals that x1 equals the inverse of this. One over three pi over two plus two n pi pi. We can choose any value. We can also make this half and make this negative half. So one half minus negative one half will equal one. And one is greater or equal to one. But I prefer to make this one 
and make this negative one. So it would be one minus negative one equal to, and two is greater strictly than one, which is our epsilon. So we found a value of X2, and now we found a value of X1. We need to confirm one only condition. We have to confirm that X1 minus zero is less than delta, and x2 minus 0 is less than delta. How can we prove this? We need a property which is called the Archimedean property. What does the Archimedean property says? The Archimedean, Archimedean property. The Archimedean property says for all delta which is greater than zero, there exists a natural number which it belongs to n. This number, for pardon, this number cannot be zero to n star. This natural number cannot be zero, that it satisfies that one over n is strictly less than delta. Let me repeat. The Archimedean property says, for all delta which is greater than zero, there exists a number, a natural number n, which is, which doesn't equal to zero, that one over n is less than this delta. So, in the definition, we have for all delta greater than zero. So, we can use the Archimedean property so easily. So for all delta greater than zero, there exists n belongs to n star that such that one over n is less than delta. Then how can we use this property to make, for example, x1 minus zero and make it less than delta? We know that x1 equals one over pi over two plus or three pi's over two plus two and p. And we know that this term over here is less than, when we eliminate this from the denominator, this term over here will be greater, is less than one over two n, two pi n. And this one over two pi n, when we eliminate two pi's from the denominator, we will also get a bigger term. This is less than one over n. And one over n, as we said in the Archimedean property, is less than delta. This makes x1 is less than delta. And we can take the absolute value because this term over here is positive. We can say x1 minus zero is less than delta. Now, proven that x1 minus zero is less than delta, let's do the same with x2 x2 equals 1 over pi over 2 plus 2 n pi. And this is when we take pi over 2 from the, from the denominator, x2, we will take, we will get a bigger value of this. We will get this value is less than 1 over 2 n pi. And this 1 over n 2 n pi is less than 1 over n. And According to the Archimedean property, this one over n over here is less than delta. We've proven that x2 is less than delta, which implies x2 minus zero. We can take the absolute value because x2 is positive, is less than delta. Now, our proof is complete. We have, we have epsilon equals one, x1 equals one over three pi over two plus two n pi, and x2 equals one over pi over two plus two n pi. The two conditions are satisfied such that x1 minus zero is less than delta, and x2 minus zero is less than delta, and when we take the absolute value of sine of one over x2 minus sine of one over x1, this equals to one minus negative one equals to two, which is greater than one, 
which equals epsilon. So according to the Cauchy criterion, the limit uh, of sine of one over x when x approaches zero is at D and it does not exist. Thanks. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave some comments and leave your feedbacks. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and thumbs up. Peace.